Good morning, friends. It's another adventure starting in Boulder City, Nevada. Alrighty, friends. Uh, yes, I am back again. This is not the same trip that was premiered, I don't know, a couple months ago from now, but uh, I decided to come back up to this area because I left much undiscovered on the last trip. And it's one of my favorite places, so it was calling to me. Let's depart the Sands Motel and head to our destination, which I will tell you about on the way there. For now, just enjoy this classic 1950s piece of architecture that I'm sleeping in. I love this place. I really do. It's a bargain. All right, our location is actually in Arizona, um, not Nevada but it's in the same general region of what's known as Black Canyon, the Lake Mead National Recreation Area. Um, so below Hoover Dam, actually, on the Colorado River is where we're heading today to seek out a very popular location. Um, it's actually Friday, July the, let's see, for our filming date. I'm gonna try to start doing that more often here. The 28th, Friday, July the 28th, another day taken off of work so I can work for you guys. Now it's 9.15 a.m., kind of a late start, you might ask. So there's a reason for that also, a calculated reason. Um, I would say a necessary reason, actually, as you're gonna learn throughout the day. Not the most beautiful lighting right now either, but there's your look at uh, beautiful Lake Mead, created by Hoover Dam, which we are now, we're gonna be driving over a bridge where the dam is, but we're not gonna be able to see the dam today. Um, and I'm not gonna have time, I don't think, to get out on foot and take you out onto the bridge that I've taken you guys out on before. I think a total of two times now on two different episodes, including touring Hoover Dam. A episode I, I like to pitch here because for me, it was one of my favorite trips. Um, I adored Hoover Dam um and i still do i i just this area calls to me i don't know what it is it's one of those places in life that just connects you know with the soul and it calls to me and that's why i'm back here so soon after my last trip oh boy it's 9 30 in the morning and it's already 102 degrees according to my uh temperature gauge here in the truck 102 degrees at 9 30 in the morning in the mojave desert Woo -hoo! We're heading down into this valley, which is heading down to the Colorado River, which is right below us. Can't see it from this vantage point, but it's there. And we're looking for our second left to the commercial boat ramp where the ranger said I am permitted to launch from with, as an owner of my own kayak. So that's what I'm looking for. Alrighty, we made it to uh, Willow Beach where we're gonna launch off for Emerald Cave. But before we do, um, my GoPro's kept overheating on the way down here and I wanted to kind of talk about a few things and I'm not sure how often I got cut off. Um, not a good sign when your GoPro's overheat in a air-conditioned cab. <laughs> and look at how crystal clear these waters are. It's one of the things I love about the Colorado and I'm starting to see that greenish, greenish tinge we've seen like in El Dorado Canyon where I flew my drone over those crystal clean waters. Those were not filters, folks. That is what it actually looks like. And we should see that in abundance today. So the general plan is we are going to be kayaking upstream towards Hoover Dam, up this place called Black Canyon, part of the Nat Lake Mead National Recreation Area, Colorado River. Gonna be going two miles, is my understanding, upstream uh, to find the cave. You could keep going if one really wanted to. There's like an old powerhouse or some other sites maybe we'll see along the way, but the primary destination is really just this beautiful green water today. All right, here we go. Um, this is actually really good information to know. So basically, this water is cold, and the reason why is it comes from Lake Mead, you can see chilly waters, upstream there. And when it before it goes through Hoover Dam, it passes through the deepest and coldest parts of Lake Mead. So it chills it down, and then it gets passed through, so there's a constant 55 degree year-round temperature here. 
that's pretty cold <laughs> for swimming, I think. All right, enough talk. Next phase of this operation is to inflate my kayak and then transport it via dolly down to that boat launch. So I'll probably drag my kayak down to the beach on the dolly and I might bring the dolly back up to my car since it's within walking distance and then we'll uh, do something like that. I'll probably show you the uh, inflation process. All right, we're just gonna head on down to the water and we will launch. That makes me not happy to just see they're lining up all those kayaks. So eventually all these people, there goes one of the tour groups. It's my competition for the day. Oh well. I think from what I've read though, I was expecting maybe 10 to 20 times <laughs> that. So I am not complaining at all. I, I, this couldn't be better, I think. Better circumstances to try to do this, so. I think I found the only shade in a hundred miles from here, under this tree that I'm in, getting ready to embark on this journey. Alrighty folks, I just opted to get everything together and get straight up into the water here. Losing daylight here, not really, we got a lot of daylight left. But uh, yeah, we're on our way upstream two miles, they say, to the Emerald Cave. And the waters are already green around me and I'm guessing about six feet deep, but crystal clear. Some vegetation under the water, like little, I don't know what it is, green like seaweed like stuff. Not sure what it actually is, but anywho, we are off for another adventure, folks. So far, everything feels good though here in the boat. I decided I'm not calling it the SS Baller anymore. It just sounds dumb to me. <laughs> so the boat is as of yet still unnamed, waiting for the right, the right thing to make it uh, the best it can be. I did talk with a girl that was, I think she worked for one of these outfits and she was sending off people in their kayaks, their rentals. Talked a little bit and she gave me some tips about this area. Um, said it's worth going even further upstream and you can go all the way to Hoover Dam, but it's a 12 mile paddle upstream. Glen Canyon backhaul was a one way downstream, 15 miles, so 12 miles. But that ain't gonna happen today, we started late. It's a couple ducks off to the left. Here's your ducks. They look like younger ones, whatever they are. I don't know what kind that is actually. I've never seen that kind. Are they ducks or are they some other kind of avian species? They have like red eyes or something. It looks like they're demonic ducks. Weird duck, I've never seen that before. Very red eyes. And the wind is really, when the wind picks up, because there are light winds today, um, it pushes me upstream. I don't have to really paddle. <laughs> so it's nice. Now going downstream, as the day goes on and the wind picks up, that might be a, that might suck. You're gonna get to see and find out though. But here you go. Here's like a good example of a, I think what I have to assume is a tour group. You see sun rays like underneath there, just a greenish color. It's pretty deep here. I don't see the bottom, um, but when you can get closer to the shores where you really see that emerald green and it glows almost like in the midday and afternoon. And once again, that's why 
you know, I'm not crazy and wanting to do excursions in the middle of the day, it's recommended if you want to see the green that you do it at this time. And I think the best time is the sun's eventually going to be west and you need it above the canyon walls. So if it gets too late in the afternoon, it could create too much shadow and you really wouldn't see anything. Um, but I think we're going to be there at an optimal time to see this phenomenon. The Emerald Cave, I'm going to call it, or Cove. I found a spot where there's not a single paddler, I think, behind me or in front of me. Well, I hear one voice, but almost pure quiet without human sound is what I'm saying. I just hear some bird off in the distance making a noise. And other than that, it's just dead quiet out here, dead calm. Maybe let's just enjoy this moment together before we get upstream where the action is, the cave. Kayakers on the left of me, kayakers on the right, here I am, stuck in the middle of kayakers, oh yeah, stuck in the middle of kayakers. That was bad. I'm flip-flopping cameras like flapjacks over here, but I get different views with different cameras and there's some of the touring groups that I noticed kind of far upstream. And we're getting closer, I think that's my estimate, because that's where I keep seeing boats hanging out kind of in a what looks like a line and then people turn around there so I wouldn't be surprised now I've seen a lot of people going over here too doing some cliff diving I think there's a couple fellas about to do that so there might be a good rock to jump off of over there and what looks like a cave or something there it, there looks like there might be shade on that side so at the very least maybe you can get a nice cooling cooling off before you have to paddle against the wind but at least downstream here, like these folks are doing, but they're doing it with ease. They're not having any issues at all. And uh, once again, just admire Black Canyon here. And I think I might see a tram, an old tramway or things built into the side of the mountain. And one of the blog posts I said is when you see like an old tram, like a cable tram type device, you're really close to the cave. And I do see things built up into the rocks. So that could be, evidence that we are indeed close to the cave. I think I see one of the beaches I've seen that people said you can kind of get off at and I'm wondering if it's a good idea to do so while I let that group ahead of me go. I, I see the tram so I am confident we are at the cave pretty much and uh, I, I'll show it when we get closer but maybe it's a good landmark for you to look out for if you come here and you're wondering. This two miles was a piece of cake, by the way. I would say a little bit more arm work than going downstream at Glen Canyon, but not by much, really, to be honest. And with the wind at my back at times, it's been really easy. So I don't know if you could see this little contraption up here. It's some kind of cable system, presumably to, I guess, transport things back and forth. And there's like a walkway built into the rock up there. Um, I'm gonna guess this is from the Hoover Dam times, maybe the 1930s handiwork. I mean, they're not doing anything here today. So I'm not quite sure. I'm not read up on my history here for what that is. I didn't even know. There's like, you see that walkway up there? And here's our little beach that I was telling you about. I'm floating right into them. And I can actually see like the glowing green color towards the shore. I think we hit this at the exact right time. I am so stoked. So what do you guys reckon that was for? Obviously a walkway for workers to walk, but what were they doing and why do they have these tram systems like that? Did that have to do with mining or something? Or is it something from the Hoover Dam era? Now I wish I would have read up on this because I didn't really think about reading up on history for this. I was just like, ah, oh, we'll just go to the, the cave today and we'll be good. But that is neat. Would any of you walk on that though? 
I think I would. Maybe not now. I don't know if it's wood or metal, but it would be thrilling, wouldn't it? It's almost like one of those Via Ferrata type things or whatever those are called. You know what I mean? So this place came onto my radar maybe 20 years ago. I used to collect old Arizona Highways magazines. I still have them. And I had an issue, I think maybe from the 1990s or something. I've got some all the way back to the 1970s. And this is where I saw this place first, was in an Arizona Highways article that's 30 years old now, easily. And when I saw it, I was like, this place looks awesome. But this is before the internet, folks. <laughs> This has got to be something here. I don't know, man. The people are kind of backing into it. So you see, let, let's face this way. You can kind of see them. They're all going in. And I think that's just a line. So at least I'll be in line behind the whole group. Now, maybe another group will form behind me. I don't know. But we're going to get in line and try not to ram anybody. So there's the fabled Emerald Cave. And you can see what the group is doing. They're all backing in one at a time and then they're gonna get their picture in the cave. How cool is that? So there's a whole ecosystem on this camera. All right guys, after this group, we have that gentleman right in front of us there. He's gonna go in, we'll wait for him to come out. And then we're gonna head one at a time, guys, so we don't create a little trash together. Everybody else is backing in, so it makes sense. So the tour group's aware of my presence, and they're going to give me time in here. I'm not going to spend as much time as the tour group did, because it's just a little old you know? But this is it. This is the Emerald Cave. I'll get my other camera out in a second, and we'll take a quick look. This is awesome. I just don't have anybody to take my picture. It's a thing, so that's the benefit of going with a tour group, because you'll get your picture taken. If I can prep and get the GoPro set up and get some underwater shots, that'll be better. So I think what we'll do is we're gonna head across the stream, let that group have their time in here, and then I'll paddle back across or something here when the coast is clear and maybe get some more time to get some underwater shots. But yeah, we're here in the Emerald Cave and Black Canyon uh, Lake Mead National Recreation Area, baby. My selfie. All right, so I'm gonna change up here and we're gonna go across the river and let those folks take their time and have fun. Cause I feel like we need to do that a little bit more here than we did. All right. That was neat, but I don't feel like we did our do justice yet. It's all clear. I gave them the all clear signal, so I'm gonna go. There's something of interest upstream there that I might want to see. This is usually the turning around point. That is the pinnacle of the kayak. The group is that little cave. We'll see it maybe over here a little bit further off, and I'll give you a look again at another group. You can see how they do it. They kind of hug up against the shore because the current and the wind does blow you a lot here, and it's hard to back paddle. So you kind of line up and hold onto the wall. I had to readjust a lot. And upstream, there's like another tram system up there. So we're still like 10 miles away in theory from Hoover Dam at this point. My only slight gripe, and I don't know how I would fix this problem, is really just the tour groups. No complaints about tour groups. I really, I was even like surmising early on, like how would I create a tour group and make a living of doing it? So not complaining about that, but they take a long time because they have to go in one by one. Then they have to backpedal in and all fit in there, like what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I don't know, 10 to 15 boats, inexperienced kayakers, one at a time. And then they come out one at a time so they can get their picture taken. So 
I should time this. <laughs> I'm gonna be more prepared the next time I do it, but it's, you know, I felt rushed. I just felt like I had all those people waiting on me and that's why I'm hanging out over here. And I was like, oh, there's no more groups coming. Well, I think I was wrong. I think there's a couple groups kind of lined up. So, but if I have shade like this, I mean, we're good. I could hang out here for a long time. You also hear like when people are pedaling in and stuff. I mean, people panic. They're back paddling. They don't know what they're doing. I don't know what I'm doing either, but it's not that hard. <laughs> but the guy was saying, so I could hear him saying someone was panicking. He's like, don't panic. So it's basically that that you have to contend with. You, you need to have a patient mindset, I think, if you're going to do this and expect people. Just expect it. And I think it's going to go a lot better for you. You can really see on this camera too, the low light camera helps how clear and green the waters are. I can't wait to poke down with the uh, GoPro. I almost wish I had brought my snorkeling gear. I see the appeal of this emerald cave or cove and you know the beautiful water down here, the green waters, which you'll see up and down the Colorado. Even at Hoover Dam you see that effect. And uh, it's cool, don't get me wrong, but I just it just seems like, I don't know, it's a lot for uh, just like a kayaking day trip, I guess. It's, I, I'm surprised it gets as much of a draw as it does, is kind of what I'm saying. However, I guess for kayaking companies, it's a destination. So it's something to market and talk about. It's cool, but it's not like mind-blowing cool in my opinion. It's all right. <laughs> I'd do it again, for sure, but... Um, yeah, that's just the buzzkill part. And you can't really avoid it because if you come out here too early, everything's dark and you won't see the green waters. It would be probably more like this, I'm guessing, you know, than like all lit up in green like that is. So I think, I think the groups just keep coming and coming. So if I want one more round in the cave here, I'm gonna have to get in line when it appears, so you hear that echoes. There you go. That was it. Nice echoes. He's having them yell because of the way the echoes are. <laughs> you know what I might do is actually I think I'm gonna head up and we're gonna check up this tram contraption up there and we'll see if we can find another nice cool place in the shade. For some reason, nobody really goes, not many people go up further here. So we're gonna be a little adventurous and these old tram things are very fascinating to me and very curious. Like what are they, what did they do and why? I guess to shuttle things across the river, maybe that's the only thing I can think of. What, I don't know. And why, like what is that up there? So any guesses people what the purpose or function of this thing was? because clearly it's not in use now, or the age. Is it Hoover Dam era? And what, what is the purpose? Because clearly there's like a little tram car. So, and I also see a ladder, so I assume personnel would climb up this ladder to get up to the top there. I wonder if one could do that if one chose to. It looks like they put like a little barrier here to make it difficult, but I'm guessing that was how people got in and out, but what the heck were they like transporting across? Was it people or was it goods? Maybe it was like somebody lived up there for long periods of time and they had to like bring them their food. I don't know. What a strange thing. And it's got like this metal tube. I guess it's just a support basically and concrete. Like that is sturdily up in the wall there. You know, this has to, I'm guessing this has to be some kind of like river gauge station where they can like monitor the flow, the water, maybe because of the dam, they had to monitor that so they could release, I don't know, the appropriate amount of water to keep the river flowing. I don't know. That's, what else would it be and why? And why the tram that goes across <laughs> on the cable? See the little thing there? It's still there. It might be hard to see at this angle, but, um, and that's so interesting. I think it's about high time that we turn around and at least get in line. We'll just take it as it comes and do whatever we got to do. And we'll take one more look at this guy up here, get a couple quick last looks, and then we'll head back. 
All right, I'm afraid to turn around and look to see what it looks like now, the line. <laughs> but that's all right. You got all these like water or jet skiers too now. Ay, 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 what a buzzkill. <laughs> Give you a look there. I mean, that's, it's just constant. It doesn't, it doesn't get any worse, but it doesn't get any better. Imagine on a Saturday or something. I mean, you might have to wait like a freaking hour, man. <laughs> There's like, if you had like three or four tour groups, I bet you, you'd have to wait an hour. I think that might actually be next. Almost no wait. could see the green color now is much more pronounced than earlier because the light's getting further back in here and there's a bunch of people kind of waiting on us but you know I don't feel too bad because they take their time and I take mine. This is the Emerald Cave. This is what everybody comes to seek out are these green clear waters in here. It's also quite cool in here too. It's quite nice and I love how the water reflects up on the ceiling there, you see that? in the canyon now too, which is nice. Here's one of those little secret coves, I think. Little beach areas that you can hang out at. You'll probably just do a quick drive by and look. The waters here are fantastically clear too. So it might be nice to get out and wade and uh, use the GoPro. I think I saw this very little cove. This is, so the cave is right around the corner here. So this is kind of a good spot if there are long lines maybe. Maybe here's where you'd want to hang out because you can come out pretty far into the water here and uh, wade. And it's so cooling and so refreshing. I'll have to get the GoPro out and get some underwater footage. Oh, it gets deep fast. <laughs> I'm not prepared to go all in right now because um, I need to take my shirt off or something and get rid of the cameras, but I'm thinking about it. I am thinking about it. And there's your uh, view of Black Canyon now. And you can see the greenness in the water even here. The cave's special because you have that contrast of dark and light and the green and all that. But this is nice because you can really see where it starts to get a little bit deeper over there. You do get your, uh, you do get that. So I have an idea actually. See, I'm up to my belly button now in water. It kind of gets deeper and then doesn't. I'm not using the GoPro now, so I gotta be careful. But I wanted to kind of come out here and say a few words really quick. There's kind of a group hanging out back here too. But everybody's playing well together, so I'm very pleased. This is the best spot to swim, I would say, that I've seen today, if you're gonna do it. Now I regret not bringing my snorkeling gear so we could kind of go underwater here. But this is exactly what the doctor ordered on a day like today. I mean, I'm pretty much up to my big belly. It's my flotation device.
so that was wonderful that uh swim back there in that beach i had to share it with others but everybody was awesome and cool and quiet kind of kept to themselves and um i got to wade in the water and cool off very well i still got my towel <laughs> draping my legs. I did not take it off other than to just get out and wade in the water and a couple other moments that I did. But otherwise I've been completely and utterly covered from head to toe almost either with sun sunblock, high SPF, or cloth. I'm thinking the cloth actually. I might need to move that concept up to my arms. I've seen people fishing and stuff that must do it all the time that were wearing masks and sunglasses. They had every inch covered of their body. So probably people that do this all the time would need to. Uh-oh, here's that afternoon wind. <laughs> the northerly blowing wind now. And yeah, I could see. I was, it's when it pushes you, you go fast. But even though I'm going with the current technically, this is much more difficult now than it was going upstream by far. So now is the time on sprockets when I stop filming for a while and I, I pedal. I pedal, I pedal, I pedal. I don't want to show you the same thing twice anyway. And this is going to be a little bit of a challenge compared to the ride up here, I can tell. So I guess here's the workout portion of the video. But you don't want to see that, trust me. <laughs> you don't want to hear the cursing and the uh, heavy breathing. So I'm going to hang up the phone and we're going to pick up later when we get a little bit further down towards our destination and we'll put it all together for you. We have made it back on shore. I put away the raft. It's all packed away and slim. And I'm ready to go lay down. I estimate we got back at four. Four-ish. Something like that. So, I don't know. Probably like a four to five hour thing. They say about four hours, so that would make sense. But the ride back was not fun. I'll tell you. That wind kicked up that full 10 mile an hour, I guarantee it. And I don't know if it's my craft, my technique, or maybe I need to center myself better in the boat. But I had a really tough time with that. I feel kind of ill actually now. So I'd like to have lessons, I guess, lessons learned. Today we didn't get a sunburn, but I got to experience kayaking against the wind in a significant way. And I'm not gonna take that for granted ever again. I'm going to give you one last look at the river before we get in the air-conditioned truck here. Bye-bye, Colorado. You kicked my butt today. <laughs> 